live in San Antonio, Texas. In a few months, we'll be the home of Victor Wembanyama, the number one pick in the NBA draft, who was in action in Las Vegas this weekend. Tonight, it's the home of Golden Boy Boxing, where some of the best prospects in boxing will have an opportunity to showcase their talent tonight. Here we are inside the AT&T Center in San Antonio, Texas, where the Floyd Schofield headline card is just hours away. We're excited to see the 14-0 prospect get back to action in his first headlining event. I'm Chris Maddox, joined by the former junior middleweight champion, Sergio Mora, the Hall of Famer, Bernard Hopkins. There's some action behind us in the ring right now. Action, I think, just is coming close to wrapping up at the moment, so people know what's happening here in the AT&T Center. We've got a lot of terrific fights tonight, Bernard, but I want to talk about the fight that's not happening tonight, that being Virgil Ortiz, who was scheduled to face Amanta Stanionis in a terrific 147-pound title fight. Ortiz was forced to withdraw from this fight due to some exhaustion issues. Uh, what was your reaction to what happened with Virgil Ortiz? Well, first, I was shocked, and then, you know, once that settled in, I realized that, you know, it's about his health. And, and listen, Virgil will be back, and we want him to be back healthy. And and, and all the fans want him to be be back healthy and they wanted to see him fight but you know it's better to have him right than going there not prepared because of dehydration because of other factors that that can play into that so to me you know I'm, I was upset but then I was relieved that at least we find out now than actually in the ring the plan according to some members of Virgil's team is to make the move to 154 for his next fight do you agree with that decision yes I, I agree because, listen, you know, he's growing, he's young. Uh, I think he'll carry the weight well. He has the hype for it. And you know what? When things like this happen, dehydration and not just one time, but other situations pertaining to that, it, it's time to go ahead and take that step up. And you know what? I believe he'd, just be, he'd be just as better at that weight going up than the weight he has now. Stronger, fill out more, and you don't have to worry about those issues. All right, well, let's take a look at the fight card we are going to have tonight because Virgil Ortiz's misfortune presents some opportunities, and they begin with Eric Tudor, 8-0 prospect in the Golden Boy Stable, signed earlier this year. He takes on Reggie Harris Jr. in our opener. Marlon Esparza will go for a unification fight. Three belts on the line in the 112-pound division versus Gabriela Alanis and Joseph Diaz Jr. on the comeback trail facing Jerry Perez in his fight. Floyd Schofield, he moves up to the main event. That's a fighter I know you, Bernard, are very high on. He takes on Haskell Rhodes in the main event tonight. So, Bernard, let's talk about Eric Tudor. He was yes. scheduled to be on the off-broadcast before the incident or before the issues involving Virgil Ortiz. Now gets an opportunity on the main card. 8-0 in his young career at 154. What do you like about him? I, I like about him that he, a, he not only heart, but willing to take uh, a chance and dare to be great and and these are the things unexpected that you do where people don't expect you to be in that position and then you forced in that position based on circumstances and you 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 take it and say come on like you you take it on challenging and say come on i i want that opportunity and and this is his moment this is a chance to show the world being in this position very unique doesn't happen all the time I think is you got to tip your hat off and you, you got to respect that, you know, anything can happen in boxing. Sergio, you were a former champion at 154. What do you like about this young man? Uh, before I left the hotel, I told him exactly what I like him and his uh, trainer. I mean, everything. I just like the fact, like Bernard said, he's willing to take on all comers. Normally, when you're a young kid like this, under 10 fights, you try to strategically move around the tough guys, the tough fights. You want to get one here and there. Tudor wants all the smoke, as they say, as these youngins say. And he has a lot of gifts that I like, but he's a tall fighter, taller than me, six foot, but he digs down to the body. He knows how to dig down to the body. The jab, big right hand, what's not to like? Sir, uh, Bernard, he's fighting Reggie Harris, who we see there on screen, who missed weight by eight pounds coming into this fight. Did you have any concerns about this fight continuing? And what is Eric Tudor facing in Reggie Harris? First, I did have concerns because eight pounds is a lot. And, you know, I don't care where you're at in each state, you know, they regulate so many pounds that you can lose and still fight. Um, so, but he, they worked it out. Uh, he, you see him in shadow boxing, he's ready. But look, he still has to be taken serious, at least the first three or four rounds, because I'm not looking for him to be strong later based on losing the weight that he had to lose. So look, this fight is even dangerous because of the situation 
that he, he made this fight be or, or you know, can be. So I, I think he, look, it has to be a moment where both guys are thinking, this is my opportunity, this is my chance. Yeah, big opportunity for Eric Tudor, no question, getting some opportunity on the television slot in the opener of this event. In our next fight, we have a women's titled unification fight. Marlon Esparza, the first woman signed to Golden Boy Promotions. She has a chance to move one step closer to her goal of being undisputed at 112 pounds. But Bernard, she is in for a very tough fight tonight. Yes, she is. And this fight might steal the show. I mean, yes, Schoolfield, all the fights is happening before and after is great. But this fight here is a lot at stake. You see her personality, but don't get fooled by that smile. That smile turns into an assassin when she's in that ring. Um, I'm just excited for her to get an opportunity to, to be undisputed with no dispute about the position that she's in now. This is a great opportunity for her and a great opportunity for uh, a champion that she's fighting to try to be the same thing that she wants to accomplish, and that's history. Sergio, we have seen Marlon Esparza go on a six-fight winning streak since her first professional loss. How have you seen her grow over the last couple of years? Well, she's always believed in her in her gift and her talent, and she came up short against Denise Estrada and never looked back. She's faced Japanese legends, she's faced champions, all across the world and she's handled it right and she's getting better i mean she's she's normally in a in a position in her mid-30s where a fighter a male fighter will be regressing it seems like she's getting better more comfortable fighting behind the jab i love the way she digs down to the body her ring generalship yeah. is awesome if she had power i mean she would be pound for pound but the power is what's holding her back. But sometimes that's actually what makes you a, a more well-rounded fighter. And, and not having power, she gives us excitement about watching go. the speed, the, 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 you know, the reflexes, and, and all the talents that, that we wouldn't have seen if she was a one-punch or two-punch knockout. So it's like a give and take. Yes, power sells. Mm. But having that ability to go round after round after round, systematically breaking your opponent down, to me, that's like that's like one of the art sweet science of boxing. Sergio, we have given Marlene some flowers here over the last couple of minutes. But as I said to Bernard, this is a very tough fight she's in tonight. I think this has the potential to being the best fight of the night. Well, look, La Chucky, as they call her, she's a champion as well. She is undefeated. She thinks that this is a moment for her to shine. As, look, Marlene Esparza, we know what she is. No one really knows what La Chucky brings to the table. So this is champion versus champion. And any time you have that undefeated record, you don't want to let it go any time. Unification for the for the ladies, I think it's excitement for everybody. And when you hear Chucky and then I seen the throat <laughs> slashing, that remind me of the executioner. So I said to myself, <laughs> this is my... this." has a chance to be the fighter tonight. Let me tell you, this Gabriella is not short on confidence coming into this fight. She's 14-0. She's knocked out her last few opponents. She's coming in here with a big right hand. I think this is going to be a terrific fight. Our co-main event tonight is Jojo Diaz making his return. Uh, Resigned a new contract, Bernard, with Golden Boy Promotions. He got a four-fight deal, he says, with you guys. But it begins here, and this is probably not the start you guys were hoping for with Jojo Diaz missing weight by more than six pounds. What was your reaction to JoJo coming in so this far? This is away? not a good way to, you know, maybe he ate something the night before or that morning. But you know what? Look, it's a pound, nothing to sneeze at, but it's not four, it's not five pounds. And and JoJo's a veteran. That's, that's not made no mistakes. Should he have been over a pound? No. But I believe JoJo know that he has a second chance in life as he spoke clearly about it leading up to this week of fight night. But JoJo has an opportunity tonight to start that career basically over from where he wants to retire and be in the Hall of Fame as, you know, one of the many, many Mexican fighters of all times. He has to start right now to make more to his legacy. And this is, this is the right time. I believe that the weight, one pound, is miscalculation. It wasn't two, it wasn't three, so I don't look at that as being a mistake. I just looked at it as a miscalculation. He has a chance to make it up tonight. Well, he has a, certainly a chance to put his name back in the mix. He is still a big name in boxing and still just 30 years old, so opportunity there for Jojo Diaz to bounce back. But Sergio, he is facing a guy that, again, not lacking in confidence is is Perez. This kid has experience with Jojo Diaz. They fought in the amateur. They had sparred more than 50 rounds, and he is coming in with a boatload of confidence. 
a lot of confidence and I was surprised how confident they were in uh, the fighter meetings. But look, anytime you have shared the ring with an opponent, yes, you have an upper hand. You already know the timing, the speed, the inside fighting. He knows what to expect with Jojo Diaz. So this is a fighter that he feels this is the right time for him to shine and catching Jojo on the downturn. I mean, if you can get a former champion on your resume at this stage of your career, that's how you become somebody. That's when you become and take the attention. And that's exactly what Lopez is here for. And Bernard, we talked to Jojo about this during the fighter meeting. The book is kind of out on him in terms of beating him. If you throw a lot of punches at him, he doesn't often throw a lot of punches at you back. Can Perez duplicate what we saw William Zapata do and what we saw Mercito Hesta do in the last fight? He definitely has the talent to do that. He has the youth, right? He has the, the you know, uh, the intensity to know that he want this spot. He look at Jojo, I believe, being young, being confident as a gatekeeper. He wants to go ahead and knock the gate off uh, uh, of Jojo Diaz. And, and, and that's important because he know that they can set himself up to be the next future of this And not box. only that, Bernardo, but he, he was so confident because uh, of he's a southpaw. He called himself the southpaw killer. So Perez is confident. Normally, you don't want to face left-handers. Perez actually wants to face left-handers. He's right. already sparred with Jojo. He's already fought him in the amateurs. He knows exactly what to expect. His he confidence he's is him. not low. It's through the roof. He knows the style. He knows what he needs to do. And like you just said about the South Pole and the Orthodox, he believes he can manipulate that and be successful. And don't be fooled by Perez's record. He has lost only to high-level guys. He lost to Frank Martin, who most believe is going to be a future world champion at 135. And he lost to Michelle Rivera, who at that time was one of the best prospects in all of boxing. So he's legit, and I think that is going to be a very competitive fight. In our main event, Floyd Schofield gets the nod to be the main event on this show. He faces off against Haskell Rhodes. And Bernard, between you and Oscar, you would think Floyd Schofield is your godson because the two of you <laughs> have been lavishing praise on Floyd Schofield over the last few months. What is it about Floyd that you like so much? First, everything. Personality, <laughs> confidence, work ethics. Uh, know what he wants. Want to stay busy all the time. Um, you cannot ask for a better prospect than you can get from Schofield because he knows what he wants and he works towards that, not only in his, his, his talk but also in his behavior. Look, every now and then we know. We've been in this business. Sergio has been, been this long enough. You know when you have that it. You know when you see that it. And I see that it today, tonight, because Schofield has not only the talent but he's already in his mind and what he's said and what he's worked towards and what he wants. He wants to prove and take that chance that he's what he said. He's all what he said. And, and look, one thing is talk, and then is the work ethics. And now we're going to see tonight that step towards greatness starts every time you fight. Not just one fight, not just two fights, not just undefeated record. Every time you step in that ring, you have to be disciplined and you have to be consistent. And that's what we love as, as commentators, or as, as former fighters, as fans. Look, it does a person, a fighter good to be consistent and back up everything he says. School for right now is an old school mentality. What, what are you nodding me habits. about discipline? What are you, what I are you got nodding? chills listening okay, to I thought, I thought you yourself. When, he, when, when, when the man speaks, I know exactly what he's talking about. <laughs> Rhodes is a, I'm telling you, look, Rhodes is going to be a difficult f fight, but Schofield is a blue chip, guaranteed, can't miss future champion. He is awesome to look at. I mean, he has the speed, the power. He's willing to take on all comers. He, he has less than 15 fights. He already is talking about the biggest names in boxing. I mean, we're talking about Devin Haney. We're talking about the Shakur Stevensons. We're talking about everybody. At under 15 fights, you shouldn't be talking about those names. You should still be trying to evolve, not when it comes to this man. And he's been, exactly, he's been in the ring. Yes, sparring, this, that. So the confidence, he's not lack of confidence. We all know that. But he backs it up by the work he puts in fight by fight he shows he's growing he's elevating he's not staying stagnant at one level he's showing us every fight something different and that's makes him that would makes him different this is what i'm talking about the love for floyd schofield is real I'm, from the I, I got hot in everything you know, boy hot flashes. i agree by the way so i got the 60 close to 60 year hot flashes <laughs> so I'm, I'm i'm ready man bernard we'll let you retake your seat ringside and you get a lot of young fighters to Thank watch you. sergio and i will be back to talk about the rest of the zone lineup stick with us
The memories we can create now, that's what we were dreaming about when we were kids. I'm very aware of how lucky I am. For the majority of my career, I've been playing and no one's even watched. If you give girls the opportunity to play, they will show up. All I wanted to do was play football. This season and this time, I kind of became that six-year-old that enjoyed playing football again. One day you step out and you play in front of 70,000 people. I'm a 100% winner. I hate losing. I got so hard. I finally got here. We are now role models for a lot of young girls. We're going to have struggle. The ACL injury in football is like cancer. There's going to be obstacles. Why has this had to happen to me? But when I do get there, it's going to be worth it. It's growing, growing, growing. If that doesn't turn into more girls playing, then what are we doing here? We all have a responsibility to grow the game. We have to pass away for the next generation to show them that it's possible to play in big stadiums. There's something happening here and I need to get involved. Breaking news. The X-Series 008 card has been announced. Four fighters. Only two fighters in the ring. Every man for himself. Last man standing. Welcome to Misfits, baby. What you're seeing has never happened before. Survivor tag. Oh. History has been made. Facilidade para rir, uns dentões aqui, eu fui meio para frente. É, eu gostava de jogar com o Michael Jordan. A culpa acabou caindo em cima dele. Não foi só o fato de perder uma Copa. Eu poderia ter perdido meu filho num problema muito sério. O que eu não sabia era que ia piorar muito ainda nos próximos anos. Adivinhando que ali era o fim, o final da linha. Ele foi bom para ser o fenômeno. Deus disse que você é o And there we have a look at St. Paul's Cathedral in London, England, where just a few weeks' time, we will get Anthony Joshua back in a rematch against Dillian White. That fight set for August 12th, live on DAZN and DAZN pay-per-view. It is a rematch of a terrific fight between the two top heavyweights that took place back in 2015. That fight was won by Anthony Joshua, Dillian White, will be looking to settle the score. Chris Mannix joined back again by Sergio Moore. Sergio, it was eight years ago that we saw Joshua against White. That was a terrific fight that AJ won with a big uppercut, but we did see Dillian White get his licks in as well. What kind of fight are you expecting this time around? Same thing, because Dillian White always comes to, to, to put on a good show, and he always puts up a good fight, even when he loses, even when he gets knocked out by Pavek, and he comes back and does the knocking out as well. So the fact that Joshua looks susceptible, and we know what Dillian White is. He's just one of these tough guys that gives every champion a run for their money. The fact that he was able to hurt and get his licks in, like you said, you know, uh, back in, what, 2016 against Joshua, this is going to be the opportunity he's been waiting for because it's probably one of the last opportunities for him. So you got the hunger, you got the familiarity, and the fact that this is all or nothing on the big stage where everyone watching. So Dillian White's always going to be dangerous. I know Anthony Joshua has had some turbulence in his training camp over the last few years, but there's been consistency this year. He's now two fights in with Derek James as his trainer. What kind of difference do you think that's going to make? 
confidence uh, confidence the the way that he's gonna go thinking into the into the fight it's gonna be it's gonna be a fight where he uses his brain and then he uses his muscle that's the type of trainer that Derek James is but then he is a physical physical uh, trainer so Errol Spence is a good example of that a great example of that the mind the body the game plan so yeah I think that match is gonna be just perfect I, I saw great changes when he was with Robert Garcia but I think this is gonna be equally as great a decision for him to be training with James. Uh, you never hear about fighters and trainers getting it all together right away in their first fight. Mm -hmm. It takes time to develop that chemistry in and out of the ring. And I love this fight for Anthony Joshua. I know Eddie Hearn says AJ is kind of crazy for taking this fight with the possibility of a lucrative Deontay Wilder fight down the line. But this is the kind of matchup I think that Anthony Joshua needs. The Jermaine Franklin was a learn new things, shake off the rust type of fight. Now he has an opponent that not only will engage with him in the ring, he'll engage with them outside the ring, Sergio. The trash talk between these two is going to be pretty good over the next few weeks. Yeah, and that's part of the reason that he's still around. Dillian White is entertaining inside and outside the ring. He sells the fight. He also demands a lot of money. Dillian White wants to get the big, the A-side money, but he's not the A-side fighter yet. We know who that is, Anthony Joshua. So if you can beat down a monster, someone so popular, someone that's the man, you know, he's, he's, he's a promoter's dream, Anthony Joshua. Is. If you can knock, knock that guy off the stable, that's how you become the man. You force yourself into the A side and Dillian White has all the tools to do that. Now he has the experience. He has the hunger. So yeah, I mean, it's there for the taking. You want to talk about stakes though? Obviously a fight against Deontay Wilder is looming, but I think this is a win or go home type of fight for both guys. Anthony Josh was 33 years old. I don't know if he's going to want to rebuild after this. Dillian mm. White's 35 years old. I know he's not going to want to rebuild after this. Is this a winner go home for both men? It's a winner go home for both of them. Of course, for Joshua, it's different because he can still, you know, be popular. He still can get paid the big money, but he's not going to be that A-side. He's not going to be that mega star. He's not going to be filling out, you know, 50, 60, 70,000 arenas unless he starts back for the drawing board. For Dillian White, it's retirement, a win or retirement. I just don't see him climbing back. And when you get accustomed to making that big money with the big stage, you don't want to regress to the smaller uh, paydays. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely win or go home for both. Yeah, I love that fight. O2 Arena, London, August 12th, the zone and the zone pay-per-view. That is going to be fireworks from start to finish. On July 22nd, a little bit of a different show. Nashville, Tennessee will be the home of Misfits Boxing for Todd Grisham. The voice of Misfits Boxing will be back and ready to roll. Breaking news. The X-Series 008 card has been announced. Four fighters. Only two fighters in the ring. Every man for himself. Last man standing. Welcome to Misfits, baby. What you're seeing has never happened before. Survivor Tag. Wow. History has been made. And there we have a site of Nashville, Tennessee, one of the more entertaining cities in all of America. And a city I'm sure that our next friend, a friend here, Todd Grisham, will not enjoy one bit <laughs> during his time there, the week of July 22nd. Todd Grisham, of course, the voice of Misfits Boxing, ready to go on July 22nd. Todd, we've seen Misfits try a whole bunch of things over the last year. What are you expecting this time around? Well, not expect. What I know is going to happen, Survivor Tag. And you're probably asking, what is Survivor Tag? <laughs> I had to read the rules again myself today, but I guarantee it's going to be entertaining. You may not respect the fighters. You may not think it's boxing, but it is entertainment. And I enjoy it. It's half uh, WWE, half boxing. But this Survivor Tag, they're starting with two guys in. Last man standing. So you could tag a guy in. He comes in. You knock him out. The next guy comes in. We were, whoa, my God, big knockdown. Tristan Calcruth with a knockdown there. But let's talk about you last night. We're sitting at a Texas barbecue joint, mm -hmm. right? Yep. We're loaded up on carbs. Yes, we are. And a few beers as well. <laughs> I start talking about Survivor Tag and all these cool things. And Sergio's like, you know, I'm in pretty good shape, man. I think I might come back and go over there one day and fight. Did is you really what, mean that? Is that what I sound like? It's like a, a you sound like Chu Chin Chong, not like me, but okay. <laughs> but yeah, put me in on board, man. I mean, definitely because look, these guys. They wait, wait, want, hold on, no, no, no. You've ha you've hated this stuff for a long time. Now I, you like put me in. If I'm gonna get paid to do what Floyd Mayweather's been doing around the world against guys that aren't on his level, why not, Todd? I mean, yeah, I I watch the shows that you produce. It's very fun and entertaining but they're not on our level. So if I can get paid to be guys on these level, sign me up. Yeah, but you know what? We got like 
Anthony Pettis, that's crossover wasn't in boxer. boxing. Oh, so you fight the MMA guys too? I would love to fight any of those guys. You haven't it, fought, what, five years? Five years. You're going to tear your ACL <laughs> walking into the ring. What are you talking about? <laughs> Listen, um, if Floyd Mayweather could do it, of course, anything with the jab, anything with defense, anything where you know what you're doing inside that ring, inside that square circle, it's not an octagon, Todd. So whether these guys think they can box, they can punch, but they can't box. So... Yeah, sign me up. Let me just say this, Sergio. You're willing to put your legacy on the line. Legacy. In fighting <laughs> in Misfits Box. Let's be clear about that. You are a winner, of the winner of the first contender. You are a former world champion. But if you get beat, that's all you're going to be known for. I, that's true, but that's that's boxing. I mean, anytime you're you're in the the hurt business, that's what it is. You're going to get hurt. You're going to hurt your legacy. I mean, every fighter, every great towards the great towards the end of the career. I love how he keeps comparing himself to Floyd Mayweather. No, if Floyd Mayweather can do it, end, I can do it. Look, every, legends die hard. You know what I'm saying? I'm not calling myself a legend. All I'm saying is they die hard because they keep chasing. They keep wanting. They think they, get, they have one more payday. They think they can beat these guys. I'm not going to be facing a real fighter. So if they're actually going to be putting me against a fighter, fighter, sign me up. I All think right. there's a big difference between when you say fighter and a boxer. Big difference. But, hey, we'll see. Mams Taylor loves you. Big fan of you. I know you could hype the fight up. So, Mams, if you got an opponent for this guy, me and Chris will be ringside to see whatever it is that happens. I'll be ringside, but I promise you I'm rooting for whoever he's fighting. That's 100% sure. That's it for us here at the AT&T Center in San Antonio. Stick around. Half an hour's time. We'll be live on the zone for Golden Boy Boxing. Headline by Floyd Schofield, one of the best young prospects at 135 pounds. He will be in action. Join us then. And now entering the arena, Kelly! The sheer power. Hey Diaz, fight me. Crim de la Crim right here, I'm coming for you. Joshua! Oh! Martin did with a huge right uppercut. Wow! That's a real heavy hit. Big heavy hands again from Bams. Calm, composed, Sonny Edwards. 